Um, engage with the Houston Police Department and our chief, Chief Finner, I think has done uh, a job that is to be commended in terms of responding to the community. Uh, but I want to add uh, layers of officers who will be working, and I've said this, I'm the first candidate that said, let's work with the Sheriff's Department more extensively, let's work with the constables more extensively, there's Metro Police, there's University Police uh, Department, let's find a way to collaborate, but I want to add to that my expertise in the federal law enforcement. When there was a fugitive that had shot a number of persons, including a deputy, uh, and then when he were trying to get him, they caught him, shot a U.S. Marshal and some others. The U.S. Marshals helped uh, in bringing that fugitive uh, to justice, if you will. So I believe that it's important to note that the federal law enforcement is here, and if asked, they will work with us. But also, the federal government uh, has put aside um, $250 million is probably going to be even more to help cities with gu uh, gun violence intervention, but uh, violence intervention, stopping violence. And we need to use our leadership of nonprofits, our schools, to get those grants to begin to teach children something different. Because the other thing that I think is a great asset for this city are the people. That's what I see every day when I'm campaigning, the kind of generosity they are, uh, the kind of eagerness to help and do good. We have a lot of do-gooders in Houston. The city needs to collaborate with them. And every time I go to these groups, these nonprofits that are working on housing, uh, working on empowering women, working on giving uh, young people an opportunity, I said, I'm going to amplify you. All these culturally diverse communities, I'm going to amplify you. The city's going to know that you're doing good, and we're going to draw that good in to help lead our city. You have um, articulated that challenge very clearly. One of the other challenges is how to pay for a lot of the things that you might want to do. I always hear budget, budget, budget. City doesn't have the money for this. City doesn't. That seems to be a big challenge as well. What's your take on how the city's finances stand right now, and how would you work to go ahead and get around that to get some of the programs you want done? Well, here's where the federal government has been very helpful. Six hundred million dollars has allowed the city to be where it is today. We have a balanced budget for 2024, which is when the mayor will come in, um, and we have an ability to have a uh, structurally balanced budget up until 2025, and we have the largest fund balance that we've ever had, three to four hundred million because of federal dollars. So I will have at least 18 months uh, to really dig into how that budget going forward is going to work. It's priorities. And so we will have uh, priorities in that budget to be able to pay for them. Then we begin to look for added resources. I'll have a development officer and a finance uh, specialist in my office. Development office so we'll look for the ability for grants from both the state and the city. We've not gotten our fair share of dollars from the state. We send um, billions to the state of Texas. They hold the money. Uh, they misuse it. They've had a multiple billion dollar uh, surplus. They don't share it with uh, schools or the educational system. We've really got to work with the state to do better to realize that cities like Houston are a real asset to the state of Texas. So I look to the state of Texas and the federal government, but I want to uh, break some news here. We have a large private equity community, uh, and a venture funds are flowing into Houston. I want to do a lot with public-private partnerships. I want to do a lot with corporations adopting parks, blocks, um, projects, mm -hmm. which I feel comfortable that they will do. Maybe they want to do the arts. And so they complement the money. In addition, uh, we're going to have a lot of money flowing in here for contractors and otherwise through the bipartisan infrastructure bill. That's going to be paying for some of our infrastructure. And then Metro is going to be in line. Remember, I gave the first $900 million. That was my work for 10 years. And finally, under uh, Secretary LaHood, under President Obama, we got into the budget of President Obama's first year, and $900 million came to jumpstart Metro. But we're now in the queue for New Start money, which is going to be $140, $150 million. That's going to infuse dollars into the general economy uh, that will help us. It will not be general fund dollars, but it will be Metro dollars that we can utilize for sidewalks, bus um, stop um, um, the shelters, shelters yeah. um, and of course, uh, the uh, improving generally of our city. So there's a collaborative work that I expect to do, and I expect to tell uh, the city I'm going to speak to the city often, not through press conferences, but to uh, many state of the cities, M-I-N-I, -I, state of the city, 
uh, statements to let them know what is going on in this government. It'll be a transparent government, an open government, and the people of Houston will be welcome to City Hall. How are you going to establish the priorities? You talk about priorities because th you, you know that there are so many constituents who all feel that their issue is the priority. So it comes to you, how do you establish what's going to be the priority going forward? Well, I think there are many priorities, and the way I would do it is, of course, I already spoke to crime. I think basic services, making sure that things work. Hmm. I'm going to work with our sanitation department. I'd like to compensate them more, give them uh, uh, better trucks, because those are hard workers, the city workers. Uh, I want to move this uh, topic of garbage not being picked up on time or at it all. Uh, just off the table. So people are happy when their garbage gets away from their front door. I want to make sure there's something called the permitting department. Um, they're going to be going on uh, a new technology in the next couple of months. Uh, but I want to make sure that uh, their processes are streamlined, that projects are moved in a priority a prioritization process. I'll work with those staff. We'll work to get the best staff, but we'll work the staff that's already there. I want to thank them for their work. We'll work with municipal workers. I want to thank the municipal workers. I've got a number of them supporting me through one of the unions is supporting me in totality. They work a lot with health care. Um, and by the way, my support with uh, transportation workers, communication workers of America, um, the um, teachers I'm so proud of because I've worked so hard to um, amplify what they do and be against the takeover because it is not good for our, our community. But at the same time, I want to make work on um, the um, crime, uh, the basic service including permitting. I want to make sure that we have a health department that collaborates with the Harris County Health Department and infrastructure. And as I said, infrastructure monies that I know how to extract from Washington will still be flowing from the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I worked on. No one knows the federal government where I do, but I worked in the state government. I sat on city council. I'm the only candidate that brings all those governments together. And if people listen to my story and get to know who Sheila is, both a mother, a wife, uh, a, a grandmother, a woman, a woman who can make a difference, who can tackle these issues in a way that may not have been tackled, uh, they've been tackled before. They'll see that this city will run well, people will be embraced, uh, they will have a mayor they trust and a mayor who cares for them. I'm the change that they can believe in. You, I, I saw reports earlier in the week or so that you and I think it was Gilbert Garcia were raising concerns about the money that uh, State Senator Whitmire has available. Uh, what's that all about? What was the concern there and what do you hope will be resolved with that? It's about integrity. It's about what is right. Um, the laws of uh, the city finance were changed about uh, 2000 and um, I think they were changed after this uh, last mayor uh, was elected. Mm -hmm. And you have a maximum amount of money that you can give. It's five thousand. Uh, and what as is a, as a donor? As a donor. Yeah, yeah. And what is happening is that the uh, overwhelming uh, weight of the money, which the voters see from ads and all kinds of uh, campaign uh, techniques that are being used by his campaign, is based upon the ten to fifteen million dollars that he's been sitting on. Um, since being in the state legislature for 50 years. He gathered that money. He invested in the stocks. And there's nothing in the uh, rules uh, or the laws governing finance uh, in the city of Houston uh, that says that you can use stock dividends to run your campaign or you can use money that you got elsewhere. He argues that the case has been litigated. We just simply want to have clarification for the people of Houston. Um, we're raising every dollar we can. Uh, I've got big dollars, uh, big donors, little donors, but I just started raising this money. I could use none of my congressional funds at all. Uh, and I just started raising this money in April, just a couple of months. And that's what we are competing with. So it looks as if uh, we're the uh, David to his Goliath. And every day we have to raise money under the rules. Mm -hmm. We don't have a pile of money that we can just draw down that we've gathered for 50 years from who knows when. Some of those donations may be $50,000 because the rules in the state to your campaign are totally different. 
from the rules from the federal government, but which are very limited as well. It doesn't seem like anything could happen before the election to, to resolve that, though, between now and then. What would you hope would happen between now and then to make a change in that? Well, Money's still going to be there. His ads are still going to be there. I want integrity. I want clarity. And it may be clarification uh, in our favor, or it may be in his. But I think it is important. Again, I'm the mayor people can trust. Uh, everything that I have earned has been from a salary, from working. I simply want to make sure that it is clear that maybe for the future, how candidates run in the city and how our voters know what they're running on and who's they, who they are beholden to. I'm not beholden to anything but real people who've contributed or unions who've contributed uh, to this or people who care about government. I don't know what this $15 million represents, what lobbying money it is and what special interest money it is. That's the question for the people of Houston. Do you want a mayor that you can trust who works only for you and cares about the people of this city. One more question before I let you go. And anyway, we are resolving back mm -hmm. on the program, we talked very briefly about what's going on in Congress. And now the Speaker of the House job is up. Um, and there are several people who are vying for it. One of them is Jim Jordan, who really, for most people, he's a no coat wearing guy, but he's always really very, very pro Trump. And, and President, former President Trump has endorsed him now to be the next Speaker of the House. What are your thoughts about Jim Jordan and the other people who are vying to be Speaker of the House and what's best or not best for the Democrats in this regard? Well, I hope everybody knows that on behalf of my constituents, the 18th Congressional District, I work with everyone. I've worked with Jim Jordan. He's on the Judiciary Committee. He is who he is. Uh, he's a firebrand and uh, he throws a, a, a lot of uh, uh, large statements out uh, and uh, provokes a lot of uh, controversy. Um, if he was going to run for the greater good of America, he has a right to put his name um, on the table. Uh, the other major candidate is Steve Calise. Uh, but the real issue for us is I think Democrats have been the adults in the room. We uh, worked with Speaker McCarthy and stopped this government shutdown. Uh, my interest in returning to, to Washington in between uh, my other commitments is to make sure that the people of Houston get the funding, the appropriations that they need to have this city run at its top level, to have schools get the funding that they need, that teachers will not be removed because federal funding uh, is the kind of money that is uh, paying our teachers uh, who are the uh, special needs teachers, Title III teachers, et cetera. Um, I want that to be the best for the city. But anytime you have a character like the former president of the United States, uh, a MAGA extremist, endorsing a speaker of the house that is absolutely extraordinary and absolutely untenable. And I've absolutely not had that in the time that I've been in the United States Congress. I've never had a speaker run Republican or Democrat where an outside force comes in and endorses and in particular someone who served as president of the United States. That is not good for America. It is not good for the collegiate harmony that needs to go even in our differences, our policy differences. We know that we have to run this government for the people of this country. And so to have someone get that endorsement gives pause and gives a absolute fear of intrusion. We'll never forget January 6, 2021 and the involvement of the former president and MAGA extremists. We won't do that. I want this city to be a city of love, a city of people working together. And the kind of philosophy that MAGA extremists have sends us in the wrong direction. Let's, no matter what your party is, what your beliefs are, let's work together, let's have harmony. And that's what needs to be in the House of Representatives. If Jim Jordan is going to free himself from uh, those kinds of uh, attachments and lead, the conference, his voters have to vote for him or vote for Steve Calise or anyone else that runs. But we must focus on what is best for the American people, not one man. Congresswoman Jackson Lee, thank you for your time as always. Be safe on the campaign trail and your yeah. travels back and forth. Hopefully we can um, get some stability in Congress and good luck as you run for the city uh, mayor. I, I'll work on stability and I want everybody to know I'm the mayor you can trust. Sheila Jackson Lee, a woman, gets things done. Thank you, Congresswoman. <laughs> this is uh, Houston Newsmakers Extra. Share this with everybody you know.